The Reichswald Forest War Cemetery serves as a lasting reminder of the vicious fighting that took place in the Rhineland during the final months of the Second World War. This cemetery is situated in the dense woods of the Reichswald in northwest Germany. It was here that the British and Canadians suffered over 6,000 casualties fighting in the Reichswald Forest. But of the nearly 8,000 men who are buried here, 4,000 are airmen from the Royal Air Force who died during action between 1940 and 1944. Their remains were brought in from the cemeteries and isolated sites all over this region. Most of the other graves here contain the remains of Commonwealth soldiers who died either during Operation Plunder, which was the crossing of the Rhine River, or during Operation Varsity, which was the airborne operation that supported the crossing of the Rhine River. The fighting in the Reichswald was part of a broader battle that took place along the entire length of the Rhine. Both sides suffered heavy casualties in the battle for the Rhineland. It took the Allied forces just as long to negotiate the last 30 kilometers to the Rhine as it did for them to cross the next 300 kilometers into the heart of Germany. The German forces were well aware of the fact that the Rhineland gave them one of their final chances to set up an effective defense. And so they clung on desperately. They inflicted but also suffered heavy casualties. Of the Allied soldiers who died in the Reichswald Forest, actually only a small number of them are here in this cemetery. In terms of nationalities, this cemetery contains the remains of 6,200 men of the United Kingdom, over 700 from Canada, 327 from Australia, 127 from New Zealand, 72 from Poland, and one each from Belgium, the Netherlands, Norway, and the United States. So right here you have a perfect example of the devastating cost of some of these actions. Every grave that you see behind me in this section has the same unit and the same death date. These are all men from the Ox and Bucks, the Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire Light Infantry, airborne. And every one of them died on the 24th of March, 1945. James Stokes was born in Glasgow, Scotland in 1915. He was a private first class in the 2nd Battalion of the King's Shropshire Light Infantry. On March 1st, 1945, they were launching an attack on Kerbenheim, Germany. Private Stokes was a member of the lead section of a platoon that had been pinned down by heavy fire from inside of a farm building. Without waiting for orders, Private Stokes dashed through the enemy fire, disappeared inside the building. Soon after, the fire stopped and he reappeared, wounded in the neck. This action enabled the platoon to advance to their next objective. Private Stokes was ordered back to the regimental aid post to get a treatment for his wounds, but he re refused to go. The platoon then once again encountered heavy fire from a house over on the left. And once again, without waiting for orders, Private Stokes rushed the house by himself and once again, all firing ceased. 
His gallantry enabled his platoon, which he subsequently rejoined, bringing along five prisoners to continue the advance. In one final assault, Private Stokes, now severely wounded, once again dashed through to the objective through intense fire. This time he fell, firing his rifle until the end. In the end, it had been found that he was wounded eight times in the upper part of his body. Private Stokes, one object throughout this action was to kill the enemy, protect his men at whatever personal risk. His courage, his devotion to duty, his example inspired everybody around him and ensured the success of the attack at a critical moment. Moreover, his self-sacrifice saved his platoon and company from heavy casualties. For his actions, Private Stokes was awarded the Victoria Cross. One thing you'll notice with many, if not all, of the Jewish soldiers who are buried here, they enlisted under pseudonyms to make them sound, themselves sound less Jewish, which was interesting considering they were fighting against the Germans and what the Germans were doing to Jewish people. So for example, L. Salinger served as Trooper L. Saunders. He made his name sound less Jewish to serve and there are a lot of men buried here who did the same thing. Not every soldier here died as a result of enemy fire. John Robson was just 18 years old when he joined up with the number six commandos of the Durham Light Infantry. The men of the unit were gathered in a house a few miles from the Rhine River, making preparations for an assault on the German positions. The new recruits, John Robson among them, were understandably pretty nervous about entering combat for the first time. And so the veterans of the unit gave them some various tasks to keep their minds busy, to keep them occupied. One of those tasks was to arm grenades for use in the attack. At some point, while these grenades were being armed, one of the new recruits dropped a live grenade with a time detonator on the floor. One of the veterans who was present wrote a letter home to John Robson's family, and he told them that the veteran men began to jump through windows, ran out the door, but the new recruits, they froze. Well, almost all of them. All of them except John Robson. Witnesses recalled hearing him say that someone was going to have to be a hero just before he jumped on the live grenade. His body absorbed the blast. It killed him but he was the only one. By his heroism that day, John Robson, an 18-year-old kid, saved the lives of the men in his unit. Mm -hmm. 